So many different teams from APAC that are playing under different names, and uh, it makes talent. it talent. Talent. Talent, yeah. which is actually not the same talent as last year right. as well. So I know for us, you know, trying to keep on up, but something that we are going to have to keep on up with here is going to be this draft chef. Now D Sports over on purple, Onyx Rise on the orange. They're going to lock in the Earth Shifu as their first band. I feel like Nouns gets a power up when they're on oh. the purple side. It just fits off. Intellion. Ooh, Intellion, Intellion Band. That, you actually were talking about how they could potentially start to target Toon being one of the best players in the world. And that Intellion Band is absolutely targeted at Toon. I would guess Toon isn't going to be any do doing any targeting with that snipe shot because they're not going to be able to play it. But two defenders have been banned as their second choice, Slowbro and Umbreon. And we were talking about Umbreon and the shutdown potential that it has. Slowbro also has that. But it looks like they're going to prioritize this Charizard. I fully get it. Charizard has been a huge powerhouse pick in a lot of different matches. It's also fallen short in a few. It's not quite as dominant as maybe I think some of the people thought it was going to be Originally, it is again, it's a ranked powerhouse right now. It runs over everything, but uh, so is Sarah Lynch. You know, we've seen a little bit of like kind of back and forth between these two powerhouses, expected a lot of bans, and then taking their support second, we are going to be giving the Hoopa over to Onyx Rise and then Odessa with the signature Elder Goss. Yes, the signature Elder Goss, which we have seen come in with those steals. Now, Brav, being that uh, tank connoisseur, has decided to lock in Trevenant. I know earlier on in yesterday's matches, we didn't actually see a lot of Trevenant. I feel like it didn't actually get selected until later on in the day. So I guess uh -huh. they're carrying that on, realizing that, no, Trevenant is still actually a really great pick, especially with that Horn Leech Woodhammer combo. Yeah, and then we're seeing another defender. They're actually kind of going roll for roll almost here. Uh, with the Mamoswine, which we've seen so much over the weekend. Zoinks making a great choice as far as his Pokemon to watch earlier. He was the one who chose Mamoswine, and it's just, it's so powerful. I still think uh, enabling so many different, like, single picks that lead into so much good damage. Blaziken looks like maybe going to Sereo. There could be some switches here as far as oh, playing what, but... My gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's happening. You're, you're, you're showing it. You're giving a little bit of a spoiler, but it's coming back. We are seeing the Zara Aura. We saw it the first two sets of yesterday doing quite well. Toon, supposedly the innovator of playing this Pokemon, and it's coming back. It's coming back. Seeing this team composition, it is so brawly. They have four melee characters here. I mean, Eldegoss, yes, it does do that range damage, whether it does a lot of damage, but coming in with a Delphox to counter this, if Axe selects this Fire Spin, uh -huh. that could be a huge nuisance for Nouns here if they're all bunched together. I've been wondering why we haven't been seeing more Fire Spin Delphox all weekend, to be 100% honest. Uh, currently, there are a lot of like really strong self-sustained Pokemon as far as a lot of these brawlers that we're seeing, or getting a little bit of extra healing is really important on them. So being able to potentially lower some of the healing, whether it be through the Cursed Incense, which we're seeing currently used, or the Fanciful Fireworks uh, Unite move, that's all really good. Plus, Fire Spin, it completely lets you like disengage or allows your team, if they've got a bunch of brawlers, to engage on one target. So I think it's a great pick. I think it's got good mobility potentially as well. There's just so many good things that you can do with Delphox. But I really like that final pick on both sides. I feel like both of those are going to be kind of the signature Pokemon that are different from these comps and most of the meta comps. Yeah, but as we get prepared, I'm going to keep my eyes on that Mamoswine. Swine. I feel like this is going to be an absolute luau for them. The feast, because there's just so many melee rangers coming and running at them, whether they're able to target down with their ice fangs. But firstly, they need to get online. But Chef, we are about to head on into our match here. Nouns Esports going up against Onyx Rise. Your first match for round two. The first one to see who's going to make it into our top four. How cool is that? We've got Nouns, like I said, on the purple, uh, and then Onyx Rise in the orange, and currently they're sending a little bit of protection for this poor little Char Cadet in the center area. Both sides going with a little bit of protection. Charizard will be the one going to the center area for Nouns. Yeah, but we can see Adesu that has decided to just not take that red buff. Zoe has actually taken it on the Hoopa, getting a bit of a stun there, able to get some healing and HP, but this has allowed Sereyu to go in and get in the first dunk for their attack rate. That's really good. It can be really hard, especially if you're kind of like the first few when you're still a, uh, a poor little Torchic that's currently getting bullied quite heavily, but is going to make it back to the pad. 
Uh, the damage from uh, Flail can be pretty significant if you do a lot of damage to that Magikarp, but not allowing the Magikarp to get anything going, although Adesu getting very oh, low barely gets away at once again with that heal. Yes, and it's just being able to keep that momentum forward, right? You've got to get the effort points, the hits for that magic harp. That way they can fill up their bar and get that Gyarados. However, lurking in the tall grass, we have Sarah Lynch diving on in. They have managed to zone out Noun's esports here and soak up those Swild Blues, leaving that Altaria and taking down that Torchic too. Oh, that is a very early Gyarados. That's looking great up in this top path for the side of Onic Rise. Look at this Gyarados immediately kind of shifting over, and they're getting a pretty strong invasion here, although there's pretty significant defense as far as things go. Adesu, though, still kind of being gate-kept at level 3, needs to find a last hit, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing Onic Rise kind of jump in there to try to prevent that from happening, but they will just get back through the portal, go home safely, waste some time, and come back safely, too. Yeah, they've decided to come back because we do have those Swabbers and Altaria that are going to spawn at the eight minutes. However, now it's eSports, they're not going to focus on that. We have four members trying to target this uh, basement pad. However, Zero Aura Tune ends up going down. Oh, no. That's uh, a pretty... Oh, actually, we're going to see another KO as well. So that's two strong KOs early for Onic Rise. Feels like they've really taken the early game so far. I mean, 51 to 9, that's a pretty big side. Desu still at level 3, still getting chased down. Will Dev make it back to the portal? Yes, just barely in time. Amazing portal placement so far from Zoe. Yes, and the fight isn't going to stop here as you have Gyarados going in and bouncing once again on Brub. However, they are Tanky Tree, able to get some shields. Quickly bonk them on the head. Unfortunately, the bonk just wasn't enough. I love the fire spin on uh, the Altaria where it just shuffles around all the little little birds right there. But look at how much action is still being had in the center area of Nouns Esports. This is Onic Rise just being very aggressive, very bullying, and realizing that they can be able to build so much space they can just take this huge lead. I mean, both of these damage dealers that we're looking at right now, level 9, and we'll see if we can get the steal on this Red Jaleki. It's very possible. This Zagirdos is a huge threat. Gatlu, though, trying to make sure they can get it, and they do manage to get it. What can they turn around? Oh, no, I'm sorry. They don't manage to get it. The other way around. Gatlu got it, and Dev running away. Yeah, being able to secure that Reggie Alecki that is going to march on through, walks on in, leaving this goal on 12 points. Adesu does have 30 points on hand. Uh, so whether they're actually going to go and break this, maybe they're just going to farm up whatever experience they can and leave it to the last minute. But oh, such a little HP, they finally get in their dunk, break that goal, but they have left Soraya unattended. <laughs> yeah, I, I do uh, think you, you kind of just got to give that one up at that point. So he was like, eh, well, this might be the last chance, so let's just take it. That's going to set them up as well for a lot of aggression as far as being able to use the spacing of Regilekis later in the game, which is still not going to be all that threatening for the side of Onic Rise. I mean, looking at the levels right now, we already have two double digits on the side of Onic Rise. It's just a matter of why take what's ours when I can take what's yours? They have just been keeping the pressure in, making sure to secure all of that wild Pokemon. However, Brub did end up managing to push back a, a lot of those Swablus and Altaria to their side, um, still not reaching the Unite move, however. Oh, the jump in from Toon, getting completely jumped on in reverse. Toon still managed to stay up, just barely is going to be able to chase down that post and get the KO. Big KO as well onto uh, the Charizard in return from Onic Rise. They've got at least Axew there to defend, and that jumping around Gyarados from Dev is just going to be able to make it so hard to actually chase down their range special attacker. This looks like it's going to be a great oh. defense as they jump on Toon as well. Can they get the reverse break? Certainly 240s. If they can get off in time, and they will not! Oh, just barely! No, the Fire Blast is going to stop them from breaking that goal. They are going to retreat back, replenish that HP pool, H, HP pool considering there is that basement Reggie that's about to spawn. They're going to need to. Uh, it's going to be a little bit before the uh, Regilecki up top, but pretty much most of Nouns is down here, all but Toon, and uh, there's only three members of Onic Rise. They do have better positioning as far as being closer to the Reg Ice, but they've got a tough fight as far as range, and they can bring on everybody popping the Unite move for Hoopa. That's going to bring down at least Eeyore to be able to try and just burn down that Reg Ice while this fight is happening. Axe in the back line. Reverend Ren coming through. Looks like it was maybe... No, actually, it looked like the Blaziken was able to take down the last hit on that Reg Ice in the side of Nouns. Rayo going down in return, though. 
And so they did manage to lose one member a piece while nouns came out slightly on top via getting the objective. Yeah, getting the objective, but also getting the HP replenishing here. But the fight isn't going to stop as you have a Luna being able to solo out and Ice Fang that Zera Aura down. They're just trying to see if they can try get another pick. However, that Ice Fang was not able to land its mark there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a very short range. Sometimes kind of hard to hit and move. You actually do not have a lot of leeway with it sometimes, so uh, we could see a lot more with these players. One fight so good. Big bounce coming in, but the counter of the bounce say, you jump into my arms, Gatlu. Popping that Charizard Unite. Can be able to get the side KO kind of on that Sarah Ledge, but continuing back onto his original target as everybody on the side of Onyx Rise is starting to get quite literally melted. Having to use that Unite to try and get away. They're going to take the shield from it, try to turn on the Desu though, who is going to go down. Toon jumping in, getting a return KO. This is all back and forth over and over. That portal means maybe you should back up, get some healing, because that Garrett is coming back. I feel like the Sky Ruin just turned into a trampoline park there. The way they were all bouncing around with their Unite moves and the Gyarados as well, just jumping up and down. However, we have a minute until the final stretch. 115 to 105 points, now 145. Still a really close match between these two teams. It is. It's really uh, going to come down to, I think, the final moments. The levels as well are very, very close. I would say overall, Onik has a an advantage in most spots. Uh, I feel like the real turning point could be whatever happens if they just have to fight at this bottom Reggie, but this is a pretty big uh, risk, one would say, to take because we're getting really close. We're going to be at about 30 seconds left as it spawns until Rayquaza spawns. So how much do you really want to commit to this? How much do you want to uh, forfeit, basically, for free? Well, it is a Reg Eye, so we're going to have to see whether they're going to prioritize it. Uh, Noun's looking to just retreat along with Onyx Rise. So 18 seconds left to go. Do not want to get caught in that fire spin. Um, but no, we have Gyarados going and poking at it. We might end up seeing the fight down here. It, we might. This is really awkward. Uh, it looks like everybody's just going to maybe decide to walk away, which may be the safer option. But uh, yeah, that's going to be me spawning. Uh, I think they were just trying to see if anybody was going to overextend. That shows a lot of respect for both these players. Makes a lot of sense for how close it is. But look at this positioning. Look at this Hoopa positioning. That is so far forward. That is terrifying. If somebody just walks in there, you're in trouble. You can get, oh my goodness, getting out of there. Uh, getting united by the Charizard, putting you way far back could have been kind of the end. So uh, I am very scared at how far forward they were. But that's a lot of damage now going on to the Mammoth Swine. It's trying to get the reset. It is going to get the reset after getting bopped on the head by Broth. But they're going to immediately get the kill on the Hoopa without being able to use that Unite. That is gigantic. Five to four in this final fight. They're going to turn around. Sereu getting KO'd by Sarah Ledge Toon. Chasing down Eeyore. Just barely going to be able to get that KO as in the back. They traded once again one for one. Three for three here. Now, well, I was going to say in the center, but now they've moved down to the bottom path. But the thing is, Onik Rice still have two Unite moves on hand, the Hoopa and the Gyarados to utilize. Noun's Esports have used all of their resources. They are the ones that are behind, so they need to try and get a move on, considering we have less than a minute left. Right, and I mean, Soreo has the Unite, but that does not count because it is Blaziken. They've got to find something. There we go. Hoopa Unbound being popped. Who's going to go through? We are going to see Dev at least go through, but most of the other members are already there. Pulling oh back. Oh my gosh. Going. That's going to be Toon. Oh, getting KO'd in return. Everybody going to support their own support. Brub starting to get really low. They are going to chase down as well Adesu. That's one more going down. Two members left on the side of Nouns. Rayquaza is getting a little bit low, but I think Onik Rise is going to target down every member of Nouns before they get a chance. That's a full team wipe. And with the lead in 20 seconds left, Onik Rise will take the first Rayquaza. That was absolutely wild. We had one fight and then another fight. It just seemed to draw on out. However, being able to get that team white and just keep Nouns at bay, getting those shields, going to just pad those stats a little bit further. Wow, wait. Yeah, I mean, you might as well, when you're there, take no chances, get the maximum points you possibly can every single time. But that was close. That was scary. I mean, that was such an even fight that was so extended, but it's so the better position within that final moment. Plus, it was a lot of cover picks, I think, for both sides. Yeah, so we're going to head on into our draft. We have Nouns on the purple side still. They have decided to ban the Hoopa. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so we will not see a similar draft. <laughs> we're gonna have to see what support Onyx Rise ends up going with or 
Maybe they'll steal away the Elder Gods. There's a lot of cool, interesting things they could go as far as... I actually really love when supports are banned because there's so few supports in the game that... Oh, okay. Double support ban? Come on. Is there a chance that we see first pick Elder, Elder Goss? That would be wild. Oh, but then no. this is up to Onyx Rise. Uh, whether they're going to ban you know, something else. No, they have actually decided to do two target bans here. Um, they have just shut down. I mean, we're talking about flexibility, right? Uh, Teleon, uh, then also banning away oh that God. Zero Aura. It'll be interesting to see what they bring to the table. But you called it. Picking up that Elder Goss first, considering they decided to ban those two supports. But that doesn't leave Onyx Rise empty-handed as they're able to pick up the Umbreon, which, yes, it's a defender, but it has that wish maneuver that it can still heal its team. Right, they've uh, they basically uh, shoehorned them into using that. We could, we've seen some Comfey as well. I mean, it's not like there's no other, no other options, but currently we are seeing a lot of good uh, support Umbreon usage. However, it's been a little bit more effective in the, the kind of tank role, the defender role, the true defender role. Mm. So I do like the fact they forced them into it, and now they know exactly what type of healing they're going to be fighting against and how they can potentially counter it themselves, as we're going to see the Slowbro picked up, Serilge picked up, a lot of similar picks, uh, except for that Slowbro, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, well, that's actually let out onto the field, so Brav is going to pick that one up. It'll be interesting to see what Soraya and Toon pick up last. I mean, it was a very brawly comp last time. Uh, we didn't see a lot of range, so is that what they were missing? Are they going to go for more range, or are they just going to go for more brawlers? No, they're going to go for more brawlers. Three all-rounders on this team? Ooh, this is really interesting. Uh, yeah, three all-rounders is, first of all, very... Uh, well, I guess we're seeing a decent amount, but... Seeing the Lucario, this has been a question for a lot of people. Sereu, very well known for Lucario through a long, long, long time, years, but Lucario not really doing so hot in the meta right now. On the other side, we are going to see the Dragonite, which we've seen a lot of the Asian teams do very well with. Uh, and then aside from that, pretty much entirely meta picks. So that's looking really, really solid. But uh, aside from the meta picks, which we have seen Mimikyu both pop off and kind of not pop off, I think Lucario is the biggest question mark for me. What value does it bring? What build will we go? And why choose it over something like Blaziken that has not been picked nor banned? Wait, yeah, that is actually a really good point here. Maybe this is just a comfort pick. I mean, looking at that, maybe they might end up going for that power-up punch because it seems like they are lacking the secure over their side. I mean, we've seen Dragonite go and secure some objectives here and there. Um, whether they're going to go with that Hyper Beam, so they have that extra secure. But you know what? Three all-rounders on either side. What do you think about that? I think that's where our meta's at right now. <laughs> Basically, uh, we just kind of have to accept that fact. But uh, I do think that we are going to see... Uh, a I'm okay, first of all, it's more different than I thought it was going to be. But I think we're going to see a game where the slow beam is going to be very important. The slow beam, I think, is classically very, very strong when we're in a meta where it's like one big target is the issue. Whether it's going to be like a Zashin that you want to hit or whether it's going to be a big speedster like a Zoroark. But now, it's like, who is your main target on the other side? The Serilege, maybe? The Gyarados, maybe? The Dragonite, maybe? We're going to have to see. But only one way to find out. Now it's eSports fighting for their tournament life. One more game for Onyx Rise to potentially move into our top four. Yes, here we go. We're going to send the Charcadet and that Charmander into the central area. The Magikarp, once again, going into that top lane. Um, just need to get those effort points. However, Zoe has already been shredded down to half HP on this EV. Well, we did see a lot of aggression from Onyx Rise in game number one. So time to see if we can see maybe a little bit in return. No invasion, once again, kind of the center area Pokemon are going to be the same. Getting a little bit of support, but this time it does seem like Nouns on top will be a lot more aggressive. That Mimikyu, plus that Gossifor, like I was saying, the power of Gossifor slash Eldegoss is that in path, it can be very scary, especially with the red. I guess in comparison to a Magic Cup, Mimikyu doesn't need to evolve, so it does have that early level advantage. We have that uh, Serilich already online, trying to see whether they're going to go into the bot, the top. It looks like both of the central areas are actually going to opt for that top half. Oh, I see ER just hiding there, waiting, seeing if they can find anything. Maybe one juicy target to help that Gyarados evolve, but the juicy targets right now are just going to be experienced, and they're going to be backing up. It doesn't look like anybody's jumping in all that far. Maybe a more passive game, actually. While I thought it was going to be a little bit more aggressive, it is looking very, very passive. What's going on there with that? <laughs> that Magikarp just splashing around. 
I mean, there is a lot on the line here for Onyx Rise, so maybe just trying to play it passively. Wait to get that splash so they can get that Gyarados, and there we go. The last hit on the Bunnelby was able to give him that evolution, and now they have that bounce move. Once again, a similar timing as far as evolution for that Gyarados, around the 8 minute and 20 second mark. It's going to be pretty good timing. Uh, you realistically want it by about 8 minutes, and so that's going to immediately be a gigantic threat up top. But we do have Mimikyu, who's kind of already powered up. Most of the power spikes, I would say, have been relatively hit, but boy, we're already at level 7 on that Serral Edge from Eeyore. That is going to be a very scary threat. Currently moving in, and oh no! Gets dodged by the evolution animation. And two now, who, by the way, is on that Charizard, is turning things around as far as damage goes. What an absolute kick from Aluna there to Ice Fang Adesu into their team. So once you don't have healing, there's not really much you can do except retreat. I mean, you could hold forward and maybe go back to base that way, but uh, <laughs> no. Uh, that was definitely a time for them to back off, especially if you're only giving up one KO that's on your support. It's going to be low level. You're not going to be giving them as much of a reward. You're not going to be losing that much GXP on that Pokemon because they've got the XP share. But we're going to see a spawn up top entirely going to Onyx Rise's side. And it does show that the good majority of them are going to be up top for that Regilecki potentially, although they are rotating down with just enough time. So I like that. Showing vision of where you are and then immediately moving. I feel like this match so far has been so close. Nobody has decided to dunk any points yet. But as I say that, Umbreon has dunked in the first goal, 26 points. But we have both of those objectives up, another five just to try and get some stacks in. It's going to be a Reggie Steel this time around, Chef. Now we'll see if they can get the Reggie Steel on the Reggie Steel as currently it's getting really low. Nobody really targeting each other. Reverend going in, and the last hit's going to go to the slow bro somehow on the side of Nouns. They're going to get that Surf as well to help secure that KO on Eeyore's Sarah Ledge. Two very low members of Onic Rise remain to defend, and I think they're just going to have to back up. What else can you do? No, it looks like they're just going to retreat. Do they have enough points? They've left it on five, so this could be a 25 overdone. However, Zoraya is making sure to get in those attack weight sacks that they missed out earlier on up in the top half. We have Onik on the uh, chase onto Gatlu, who ended up catching themselves in a pickle. Oh, yeah, a little bit too much of a pickle. Uh, Dev sitting here waiting, and Zoe as well. Brav, of course, the first one in line, trying to check out what they've got to deal with as a team. And they can already see that Regilek is getting very low. Potential for a steal, but no. With Dragonite there, your chances of stealing are extremely low. In fact, you are paying the ultimate price for it. You are coming up, sorry, not you are coming. Zoe coming from behind as well, pushing the entire team forward. Toon using a very, very late Unite. They are going to be able to back up in time. They're turning this around with the damage, but just barely. Is that Umbreon is going to live for such a long time? Big Unite coming out from Dev on the Gyarados. Not quite enough. Still trying to chase down here. Oh, they almost lit. They almost let that Regilecki in. Yeah, they are there to go and defend it while we do have Toon trying to take down this early. However, they had that Revenant Reg to go in and slash, but they quickly get shut down by that Mimikyu, and Serily just out of the picture. Umbreon is just standing there watching, knowing that they can't do anything to save this goal. Oh, that's a bad feeling. You're like, well, I really wish I could do something right now, <laughs> but uh, all I can do is sit and wait. So. With such an aggressive game one from Onic Rise, it feels like things are turning around completely. Level advantage at the halfway mark and point advantage are both pretty significant for the side of Nouns Esports, which is really, really good because they, obviously, they're fighting for their lives here. They're the last bastion of EU, and they've got to win two in a row. Yeah, they need to win two in a row here, but one thing they need to focus on is going to be this objective. Charging on up that bounce there. Dragonite and the Gyarados are going to dive onto it. However, Slowbro ends up shutting down the Dragonite and the Frenchie Rock ends up smushing them down and finishing the job. Gyarados being able to dodge themselves out of the way. Frenchie Rock by Luna ends up being Umbreon that gets the secure. Wow, Zoe's been in great position this entire time and look at them turn this entire thing around. It's going to be Soreo going down after two more members with Grub and Adesu have already fallen. Two will be able to defend pretty well here, but I don't know about against five. That's looking really tough. Gatlu is coming in with some support, but that goal zone is gone. They're going to start a fight off of it, though. Unite coming with Dragonite. Look at that. The Gyarados chasing down. They're going to hit a huge Unite on Toon. Toon going down. Yeah, but Gyarados isn't finished. They're going to dive on in as well, trying to look for more KO. Two members, three members of Nouns are down. However, two members of Onyx Rise are eliminated as well. The fighting just doesn't stop. Ooh. It was a slow 
burn there, but finally we are reaching that boiling point. Oh no! Are we reaching that boiling point or not? It's a ray with 50 points and one HP, not realizing that Elena was in the tall grass, and that's going to be very, very unfortunate. Brov now having to run away from both Elena and Axe Q. I mean, Adesu's there as well. They shouldn't be taking all that much damage, but wow, actually, it's going to be Adesu just leaving. Brov saying, all right, I'm giving this one up. Just get away. I'm going to build some space. Just got to take the KO reset as they can, but 195 to 123. Now still have the link. They have Lucario and that Charizard at level 13. However, on Rise, despite the points discrepancy, they've managed to keep up in levels. They have. It's actually very impressive. Uh, they're just barely, I, I think like they're just barely on level, I guess I could say. We could see them out level very, very soon just because they've been so far ahead on the side of Nan's eSports, but they've got about a 72-point lead, or exactly a 72-point lead, so they can hold on to that. This is going to be really big. I feel like if this basement Reggie can go to the side of Onikrise, they'll be exactly even or maybe even slightly ahead as far as levels go, as Nouns is going to prioritize that Reggie Alecki to get more pressure onto that top half. Yeah, but it's interesting because none of Onyx Rise are going to actually retreat and defend that. They're going to let it crash. Instead, they want to prioritize this Reggie Steel, which will be huge for the team. Rubs going in, seeing if they can get the Steel, but no, Onyx Rise get the Secure with Sarah Lynch. Ooh, that is tough. And honestly, you're in a scary position right now. I don't know if you really want to go in on the side of Nouns. Yeah, they're just going to back up. But now, look at this. We look at the levels, and it is exactly even, but then slightly ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, it was exactly even. Now it's slightly ahead on the side of Onyx Rise. All of their lower levels are just slightly ahead. The points lead still in Nouns' favor. But again, they've got to win here. They've got to defend. They've got to flip it something, or they're going home, and Europe is losing the last oh representative. Oh, my gosh. The eject button paired up with that earthquake, and they are. Mamo Slime is rumbling the floor, chucking them up in the air, being able to take down two members. And now they have siloed out that Slowbro who is now on the chase as they are trying to shred down this Rayquaza. However, they first need to deal with the Charizard who's up in the air. However, you might move had just ended up ending and ends up being Dragonite. You cannot be unmatched with a Hyper Beam secure. Hyper Beam, there's one thing that you want to do with Hyper Beam and that is burn down Rayquaza. Points lead now barely in the favor of Onyx Rise. They're up by about 108 points. They've got to counter score on the side of Nouns. There's still a minute and 11 seconds left. It's very possible, but look at this. XQ with 50 points in pocket. Still has a shield. Umbreon hiding up on the top path. Adesu does see XQ. They are going to be backing up, maybe trying to take some time. They can still potentially build back, maybe a unite move, be able to unite in, use that shield safely. So right, you're trying to sneak ahead up top. They realize they're not going to be able to do anything. They've got to back up. Maybe they've got to win a team fight, but now it has to make a move now. This is very, very close. The score lead is less than 50 at this point. They've got to do something. And it looks like they're going to collaborate together onto this bottom path, trying to protect Toon at all costs as they end up getting 90 points, and that is going oh. to break them in the lead. But Umbreon ends up getting 100, and now Onyx Rise to have the lead once again. They need to try and take the fight, get the KO. Sarah Lich has been taken down once again. Trampoline Park as we have them jumping on through with the jump pad and the Unite move. But, oh my gosh, more points went on through. 449, 523, 10 seconds left to go. Oh, 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 that's more. Is that enough? Is that enough? It's going to be so close. We saw another 10 from the Charizard. We saw more from the Slowbro. Is it going to be enough? No goal zones left on the map. Last chance for Nouns. We've got to look at the score. Who is coming out ahead? Left side purple is Nouns. Right side is Onyx Rise. And the winner oh! is Onyx Rise by two <laughs> points, eliminating Nouns. B -b 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 Bingo, Chef. We just had a mark off that with five or less points for Onyx Rise clutching it with two points because of the backcaps there, even though Nouns tried all they could to push on forward. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. It was an amazing attempt. Nouns fought literally to their last breath, but they were just, just short. Unbelievable.